Good day! For today's presentation, we will be discussing work-related musculoskeletal disorders. Brought to you by Chua, Del Castillo, Gatos, Mallet, and Maramot of BioErg EC2. In this presentation, the following topics will be discussed. First is the definition and magnitude of the problem in the occupational context. Next will be work-related musculoskeletal disorders. Factors believed to be associated with WMSD. Hand and wrist injuries elbow, shoulder, and neck injuries, the ergonomic prevention approach, examples of engineering solutions, and posture targeting and recording tools. The discussion will be presided by the following reporters. First will be Timothy Del Castillo, followed by Lorraine Chua, followed by Ria Gatos, then by Melchizedek Maramot, and lastly, Jaco Malit. For the first part of work-related musculoskeletal disorders, what exactly is this? Muscle, tendon, and nerve pain disorders are work-related muscul musculoskeletal disorders, or WMSDS. Examples encompass thoracic outlet syndrome, tension neck syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, and tendonitis. Arm and hand motions such as bending, straightening, gripping, holding, twisting, clenching, and reaching can cause WMSD. In the routine tasks of daily life, these typical movements are not particularly detrimental. But work patterns like these are linked to WMSDS. Bodily functions that are fixed or limited. Movement repetitions that are ongoing. Force focused on the wrist or hand, which are minor body parts. And lastly, a labor tempo that does not give enough time for rest in between movements. The following work-related activities can result in musculoskeletal disorders. Many hours spent at a desk, repetitions of physical activity, heavy lifting, and keeping a bad posture. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, back in 2016, back injuries disproportionately impacted the following types of workers. One being nursing assistants with 52.8%, janitors and cleaners 37.5%, stock clerks and order fillers 45.7%, maintenance and repair workers 42.5%, truck workers 32.4%, and laborers with 43%. These are factors believed to be associated with work-related musculoskeletal disorders or WMSD. First is work posture and movements. Any body posture can cause discomfort if maintained for long periods of time. For example, standing. This could cause sore feet, lower back pain, and muscular fatigue. There are two aspects of body position that may contribute to injuries. Number one is body position. When parts of the body are near the extremes of the range of movements, stretching and compression of tendons and nerves occur. Examples of stressful body positions are bending forward, reaching above shoulder level, rotating of arms, reaching behind the body, reaching forward, and bending of wrists. Number two is holding or contracting of neck or the shoulders in a fixed position. The contracted muscles squeeze the blood vessels, which restricts the flow of blood all the way down to the working muscles of the hand. As a result, the neck or shoulder become overtired. The reduced blood supply to the rest of the arm accelerates fatigue in the muscles that are moving, making them more prone to injury. Next factor is the repetitiveness and pace of work. Repetitive movements involve the same joint and muscle groups to move in the same motion over and over too quickly or too long. Tasks with repetitive movements are a risk factor for WMSD because a person has to maintain the shoulder and neck in a fixed position to exert some force, and this could cause WMSD. Work involving movement repeated over and over can be very tiring because the worker cannot fully recover in the short periods of time. The more effort a worker exerts, the more repetitive movements it has, therefore making it more prone to injuries as well. Pace of work. This determines the amount of time available for rest and recovery of the body between cycles of a particular task. 
The faster the work pace, the less your time there is available to recover and the higher the risk. The next factor is the force of movements. Force is the energy exerted on one object by another. It is the amount of effort required to lift heavy objects to move. When more force is exerted, more muscular effort will be needed. Especially when it is a repetitive movement, it will require more muscular effort. Therefore, longer recovery time is needed and this could cause tiredness much faster. Here are pictures with examples of hand position with force of movement. First we have is finger press, next is palm pinch, and the last is palm pinch. Various factors such as the weight of the objects and their position relative to the body affect the amount of force required to do a task. It requires more force to lift and carry a box with arms held outstretched and away from the body or in a pinch position than it does in a hook position, just like the pictures shown. The shape of the tool plays an important role too. Tools that do not allow the best position of the wrist, elbow, and shoulders substantially increase the force required. The next factor associated with WMSD is vibration. There are two types of vibration that a person could experience that could lead to affecting their tendon, nerves, muscles, and joints. Number one is body vibration. This is where vibration is felt through the whole body. For example, our bus drivers and truck drivers. Next is localized vibration. This is where vibration is felt coming from powerful tools. For example, our workers using drills. Great exposure to vibration may cause the numbness of fingers, lose the feeling of grip in our hands and arms. Since vibration tools are more difficult to control, workers may require to use more force, therefore causing pain in any body positions. The last factor is temperature. Temperature is also associated to WMSD. When it gets too cold, our hands become easily numb and the cold environment makes our bodies less flexible therefore making it difficult for workers to control the enough amount of force needed to do work. When the temperature gets too hot or too humid, it increases fatigueness of workers and thereby may become more prone to injury. For this portion of the presentation, we will be discussing hand and wrist related injuries. According to a study conducted by Barr et al. in 2004, hand and wrist injuries related to musculoskeletal disorders highly emerged in 2001. During this time, the majority of those who reported having WMSD are workers who are mostly employed in the service industries, having a highest proportion of 25.8% in the population. These jobs are mostly focused on assemblers, construction laborers, cashiers, and carpenters, as these jobs mostly require the use of hand tools or have hand-intensive tasks. Exposure to force, repetitive vibration to the hand, and the posture causes a development for WMSD cases to occur. With these factors, the following injuries were said to occur. One of the most common injuries found in the hand and wrist is a carpal tunnel syndrome. This injury is due to the compression of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel, leading to a loss of sensory motor function on the median nerve distribution. It was said that due to carpal tunnel syndrome, the highest median taken from the population of being away from work was actually 25 days. Meanwhile, for other risk-related injuries, it resulted to a median of 13 days away from work. Another injury related to the hand and the wrist is the tendonitis of the hand and the wrist. This is due to repetitive wrist motions. As we all know, tendons consist of numerous bundles of fibers that attach to muscles and bones. Tendon disorders are related to repetitive or frequent work activities and awkward postures that occur in two major categories tendons with sheaths found mainly in the hand and wrist. Tendonitis is a general term indicating the inflammation of the tendon. For the next portion of our discussion, we will be discussing elbow, shoulders, and neck related injuries. Neck musculoskeletal disorders are associated with repetition, forceful exertion, and constrained or static postures. Shoulder musculoskeletal disorders occur with work at or above shoulder height, lifting of heavy loads, static postures, hand-arm vibration, and repetitive motion. For elbow epicondylitis, risk factors are due to the overexertion of fingers and wrist extensors with the elbow in extension as well as posture. 
Similar to tendonitis, epicondylitis is the inflammation of the tendon at the elbow. This could be also known as lateral epicondylitis or tennis elbow. Epicondylitis is characterized by pain during resisted maneuvers that load the tendons and by the tenderness on the tendon palpation. Repetitive forceful postures such as twisting or the pronation of the forearm combined with the extension of the wrist while gripping have been associated with epicondylitis. Another injury related to the shoulder is rotator cuff syndrome. This is the inflammation, degeneration, and tear of the tendons around the shoulder. Pain with certain motions is common, particularly against resistance. Tearing usually results in weakness, where work-related shoulder disorders have generally been attributed to high static or repetitive loads on the shoulder girdle, particularly in combination with abduction, rotation, or flexion. Now, let's proceed to ergonomic prevention approach. Work-related musculoskeletal disorder or MSDS such as back injuries and carpal tunnel syndrome are the most prevalent, most expensive, and most preventable medical problems in the country. According to a study, over 400,000 employees lost work days in 2004 because of MSDS and still more had their work activities restricted. Typically, MSDS are caused by force, repetition, backward postures, vibration, and bulb temperatures. One of the most familiar causes of MSD is the use of keyboard and mouse, an activity that can result in repetitive stress, injuries to hands, arms, back, and neck. Fortunately, MSDS are often very easy to prevent. Remember, your objective is to eliminate mismatch between the physical requirements of the job and the physical capacity of the worker. Here are some steps to begin addressing ergonomics in your workplace. First is examine the injury and illness records to determine which jobs have history of ergonomic problems. Second is talk with workers to identify specific tasks that contribute to pain and lost work days. Third, use employee comments and recommendations to help formulate solutions to the ergonomic problems you discover. Fourth is encourage workers to report MSD symptoms and establish a medical management system to detect problems early. Fifth is to establish policies encouraging use of equipment, net backs for heavy or repetitive lifting. Sixth is implement programs to educate employees and monitors about ergonomic techniques designed to prevent and correct MSDS. And lastly is to develop an evaluation program to ensure that improvements are constantly made that simple solutions often works the best. Changes to your workplace need not to cost a fortune. Ergonomic interventions suggest by OSHA include the following. Adjust the height of working surfaces to reduce long reaches and awkward postures. Put work supplies and equipment within comfortable reach. Provide the right tool handle for the worker. Vary tasks for workers, example, employee job rotation. Encourage short rest breaks. Reduce the weight of size of items workers must lift. Provide mechanical lifting equipment Replace telephone handset with headset anywhere they are used frequently. Provide ergonomic chairs and stools. Supply anti-fatigue format and reduce or eliminate vibration and sharp edges. The goal of ergonomics is to prevent soft tissue injuries and musculoskeletal disorder or the MSDS caused by sudden or sustained exposure to force, vibration, repetitive motion, and awkward posture. To create an ergonomically sound work environment, NIOSH, ergonomists, and industrial hygienists recommend designing tasks, workspaces, controls, displays, tools, lighting, and equipment to fit employee physical capabilities and limitations. So these are the using ergonomics for prevention involving the three steps. First is recognizing the different types of MSTS. Second is being proactive instead of reactive. And third, making ergonomically friendly decisions. The ergonomic approach belongs to the social sciences as it focuses on human behavior. It is a social science that was found by studying humans and how they are inter interacted with their surrounding. Using a person-centered approach, ergonomics ensures that the environment fits the people and does not force the people to fit their environment. This is a, such a great approach to use in business because it helps you as a business owner to match people to job that they can excel at. Tasks can be divided up into people's strength so that each person can excel at their specialism. Any required equipment can also be matched to the employee to further speed up processes 
with maintaining employee health and safety. Proceeding to the five aspects of ergonomics. First is safety. Health and safety at work of a paramount importance. There are many laws and regulations that protect employees in the workplace so that they can work in a safe environment and have a reduced chance of injury. In ergonomics, safety covers any objects that the employee may use to carry out of their job to ensure that they are safe for the person to use. Next is comfort. Many jobs require employees to remain in the same position for long periods of time. This is what can often can use the musculoskeletal injuries. So it is important that employees who are performing repetitive tasks such as working at a computer or lifting and moving objects do not overexert themselves. This removes the risk of strains and further damage to the body. Next is the ease of use. Ease of use means how many easy it is to complete a specific task. Employers should not intentionally or unintentionally create work that is physically difficult for a person to complete. Employees should be able to perform tasks using easy physical movement that does not put stress on the body. Next is productivity and performance. Productivity means how much a person can do in a set of time. So employers desire employees who use their work time wisely and achieve the maximum output in the allotted time frame. Having greater productivity leads to better performance. And lastly is aesthetics. In ergonomics, aesthetics refers to the employee's workstation. If a person is happy with their workstation, they are more likely to be happier completing their work. A person's environment has an unconscious impact on their mood and well-being, and having an environment that is pleasing to the eye can have a huge impact on the employee's motivation to get work done. One solution could be mechanization. Automating the work is one technique to get rid of repetitive chores. Other options are available where mechanization is neither practical nor appropriate. Second, tools and equipment design. It saves a lot of muscular effort when the worker has the appropriate fittings or jigs for activities that involve holding objects in odd postures. Third, workstation layout. Correct posture, position, nuances, and etc. would be a huge factor for improvement. Fourth and lastly, weight reduction. Omit long or excessive reaches and provide workers the option of working in neutral postures. Posture targeting and recording tools. To this day, many tools have been developed in order to quickly identify tasks that may cause MST. These tools are easy to learn and can be used in participative ergonomic approach. The first one is RULA or the Rapid Upper Limb Assessment. The RULA method mainly assesses the upper limbs, shoulders, elbows, wrists, but also the neck and trunk. It applies to tasks during which the operator mainly uses his upper limb with or without movement. The postures are mainly studied by taking into consideration adjustments relating to the force applied and the repetitiveness of the gestures. Here is what the RULA assessment worksheet looks like. For the analysis procedure of RULA, there are six steps. Step 1, analysis of the request. Step 2, observation of the workstations. Step 3, activity. Step 4, processing the results of the analysis. Step 5, formulation of improvements. And step 6, reassessment of the workstation. The next tool is the REBA or the Rapid Entire Body Assessment. The REBA is a tool used to evaluate the risk of musculoskeletal disorders associated with specific tasks within a job. It is a whole body screening tool that follows a systematic procedure to assess a biomechanical and postural loading of the body. The benefits of this tool are that it is simple, quick, and requires minimal equipment, making it easy to complete multiple assessments per task or per job. This is what the REBA worksheet looks like. For the procedures of REBA, Step 1. Identify a job. You can identify a job to assess by reviewing where past injuries have occurred, where operator complaints have been reported, or where quality issues have been concerned. For Step 2. Define and understand the task within a job. Interview the operator to gain an understanding of the main job tasks, the task demands, and what the operator perceives to be the most difficult components of the job. Step 3. Identify the task within the job you intuitively believe have the highest MSD risk. Personal observation and information gathered from the operator interview select the worst parts of the task to assess. They should be based on the most awkward postures present. Step 4. Capture the worst moment with a photo. For example, 
take a photo of an operator lifting a 50 pound box from a pallet located on the floor, or a photo of an operator reaching across the width of a work table to retrieve a 20 pound bundle. For step 5, complete the REVA data collection form. The REVA re evaluates the whole body, including the upper arm, lower arm, wrist, neck, back, and legs. From the photo, Compare the position of postures of each body segment to those outlined on the REVA data collection form. The REVA provides a score for each body segment based on these postures. Step 6. Determine the REVA score. The REVA provides a single final score based on the posture evaluated, force requirements, type of movement, frequency of movement, and coupling observed within the task. The last step is continue the job improvement process. The next tool is the job strain index. The strain index is a tool used when you need to calculate the risk of developing an MSD in hand and abs in work. Repeated tasks with the hands can lead to levels of discomfort in the hands, wrist, and the elbows. Strain index was proposed by Moore and Garg 1995 as a means to assess jobs for risk of work-related musculoskeletal disorders of the distal upper extremities which is the hand, wrist, and elbow. It was developed using existing knowledge of biomechanics, physiology, and epidemiology, and is used to assess a job, not a person. The calculation is based on six task variables. Density of exertion, duration of exertion, efforts per minute, hand or wrist posture, speed of work, and lasted duration of task per day. This is what the strain index worksheet looks like. The last tool that we're going to talk about is the Quick Exposure Check, or the QEC. QEC has been designed to assess the changes in exposure to musculoskeletal risk factors, back, shoulders, and arms, hands and wrists, and neck before and after an ergonomic intervention. It's also been designed to involve the practitioner who conducts the assessment and the worker who has direct experience of the task. And lastly, it is designed to indicate change in exposure scores following an intervention. This is how the Quick Exposure Check Worksheet is answered. Once again, these are the most common tools used in assessing and evaluating the risk of musculoskeletal disorders associated with specific tasks within the job. All of these assessment tools are helpful in preventing work-related MSDs and improving the work environment of everyone.